Okay, so today I'm going to show you um, how to recover a dead cell on your LiPo battery. In this case, we are using a FreeS Sport Track from Overlander. Works the same on any battery, um, obviously LiPo, as long as it's got a balance tap, as you can see here. Um, common issue that a lot of you might find is when you've left your battery plugged into your ESC, when the truck's uh, not been used, maybe after use, you've uh, maybe forgot to unplug the battery from the ESC, or you've not correctly stored your LiPo batteries, um, as in you haven't storage charged them. Uh, okay, so we'll plug our balance lead in as we normally would. Uh, just quick note, obviously you can see here that the connectors are completely bare. These are just some spare test leads. Obviously, I do not recommend that you charge any LiPo battery in this manner. This is just for speed to um, show you the example of the issue that you may be having recovering your batteries and dead cells. Okay, so let's start. Let's start on a low amp charge, which is 1.2. Obviously, our free S, which is the battery we're running currently. And you may find this message appear, which is a battery voltage error, cell low, which means one of your cells in this battery are too low to charge, which is usually if you've dropped below 2.5 volts. Now I'll show you very quickly, I'll just move the camera close up. If I'm very quick, I'll be able to show you what the cell voltage is reading. So if we start, if we press it quickly, you will be able to see the voltage of each cell. As you can see there, one was at 3.19, one at 5 volts, and one below 2.5 so your issue is your charger won't charge it. You've heard stories on the internet that you can go and you can charge it in NIMP mode for the, um, which is obviously designed for a nickel metal high drive battery. The old, usually 7.4 or 9.6, depending on what kind of model you're running. Um, I'm gonna show you the correct way to probe and check your cells individually. Obviously we're using a cheap Core RC charger here which is, is bargain basement. Obviously, if you've got something that's above a 50 watt charger, so you may be, be running a 5S battery or 6S batteries or, or more, you'll probably already have a 100 watt charger, which would probably be able to tell you what the cell's voltages are without having to go through the balance charge uh, mode that I've just done there. So, by the by, uh, I've shown you because a lot of people will have these cheaper charges and not the most expensive that you can buy. Right, so regardless, let's turn this off. Unplug our battery. What you will need to go and find is a lead like this, which is a pronged lead, I'm sure you can see. Apologies for the bad light, it's getting late here, with two ends stripped back as so. So, obviously, like again, if you want to make up your own test lead, I would advise you to solder everything up first. Make yourself up a good test bed, good test lead. You will probably need it if you're running a brushless setup, lipo setup anyway. So, let's continue. So, obviously... We're not wired in to our normal wires now on our battery. We are going to charge each cell through this balance tap here. Now, a balance tap is a good access point for all three of the cells in this battery. Um, obviously, you can see black is always cell one, cell two there, and cell three. So, how would you charge that? I hear you ask. Well, <clears throat> What you want to do, if I wanted to check cell 1, I would obviously want to match my wires up black to black. So, for instance, grab a tap like that, as you can see. So that would check cell 1, cell 2, and finally cell 3, as you can see, red and red at the end. So, 
let's just check if it's all plugged in correctly. Right, so obviously you're not charging a free S battery anymore. There's free cells included in this free S pack. You are accessing one cell. In this case, it would be the third cell. So, you want to obviously not charge on balance mode you want to go straight to your lipo charge now as you can see mine's already set up for this because i've already been testing other batteries today however you want to have your set on 1s which is 3.7 volts you want to stick to something preferably below 0 0.7 0 0.8 amps this is because obviously these leads are not designed to carry as much current as your normal larger gauge wires here so with that being said we're on 0 0.6 amp 3.7 obviously before we couldn't charge the battery because it was refusing to charge many people are nervous about charging the entire battery for a nymph to jump start the battery if you will so as i said we're accessing the third cell which was our most problematic which was already at 2.8 cells uh 2.8 volts i think something similar thereabouts 2.2 it was it was below what it should be anyway and below the tolerable acceptance that this charger will charge whether balance or just plugged in through your leads so let's continue you'll be able to see straight away it'll kick the voltage up pretty quickly so we're already on 3.1 really and obviously we're ticking up slowly because we're feeding through the type of wires that we're feeding through we're also charging at only 0.6 amps, so this will take a bit of time, but you can see straight away that we've already achieved a voltage of 3.15. Now, I have found that if this cell charges very quickly, straight away, and tells you it's at 3.6, but crucially, it's not putting in any extra um, juice, as in amperage, which it's displaying here, you can see as it's counting up, that's how much juice you are putting into the battery from once you plugged it in. So uh, at this stage, we've obviously put that in, that's our current voltage. What can happen is the cells can ghost charge and it will display a voltage of 3.2, 3.3, whatever. You put it back into your balanced charger as you normally would with your leads and it does not come up with the correct voltage of three point say two that usually means that that particular cell is dead it is unrecoverable uh, at that point you should be willing to try jump starting it with the nymph method through all um cells which will be just Plugging it in as you normally would without your balance tap connected. You would obviously start it off on, um, I would say, a half to one amp, preferably a half if you can, or lower if that makes you feel more comfortable, um, and, and, and charge from there on as a nymph method to get, you know, five to ten minutes of juice in the battery to jump start the cell crucially above the current, uh, above its voltage of, say, um, 2.5 volts whatever so this charger will then pick it up your aim is you're manually basically balancing all of your cells at this point uh, obviously this is a great method this is the proper method of probing to test uh, your cells obviously like i said this is a cheap unit uh, more expensive units may do this job for you but i i always like to go manually anyway so uh, you can obviously clearly see what's going on so obviously we wait obviously I, I don't really have time to show you now but we wait till the cells climb in voltage it holds the voltage critically so we can then um, plug our leads back in as normal and we will be able to charge with the normal mode through our lipo mode through balance charge or through your normal mode without your balance tap on Obviously, for the first couple of charges, I do recommend that you cycle the battery only charging at something like 1.2 amps. Now, that is because once a cell falls below 2.5 volts, I believe, the chemical composition will change and will alter in that cell. So, we'll be more prone to heat buildup 
um, crystallization of the electrolytes in the cells and stuff like that, which will obviously cause um, more heat build if you're trying to charge at a very high amperage. So after you've completed this, after you've bumped all your cells up individually, you could then plug it back into balance charge it because you've got all your cells above the crucial voltage for the for the lipo charger to pick it up and you have successfully recovered your battery okay thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and check out our other videos where me and my son take lots of rc cars bashing around the east devon area thanks